In this series, I'm speaking to musicians from Manchester. For this episode, I caught up with DJ and producer John Min. Originally from a small town in Greece, he came to the UK three years ago. He quickly established himself as a key figure in Manchester's house music scene, with a string of releases to his name. The Other Side Podcast. Born in Greece. Yeah, that's right. Born and raised in a small town in the northern part of Greece. And everything starts from there. My music career and all the people that helped me to come to this point today. Yeah. So I think I read that you were big into the rave side of things. Yeah, like... 12, 13 years ago, when I started listening to that kind of music, I used to go in all that kind of parties and listening and processing the sound. And then just one day I decided to, you know what, let's do it. Let's jump from the other side of the, of the booth. So, yeah. You thought, I, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, in the beginning it was, like, all, like, Greek to me. So difficult, but... You know, I was practicing every day and learning, reading, watching tutorials and... Yeah. It's all self-taught. Yeah, I can say, yeah, I can say that. That's pretty impressive because it's not... It's an intimidating looking piece of equipment, isn't it? A DJ deck. Yeah. I remember myself when I decided to start DJing, I was saving money to buy my first controller and I... Saved. When I saved the money, I was so excited that I went and bought this DJ equipment and I started at home every day after school to practice and, you know. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. And then how long until the gigs started coming? So it was quite a funny story because I used to work like in a bar as a waiter and one day I told my boss that... I'm practicing and if you are happy to give me this opportunity to show to you and to the people what I'm working and he was like, yeah, okay, let's do it. Tomorrow you're DJing. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's it. That's so cool. Yeah. Did you get paid or was it? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. And after that, you know, I was starting doing more DJ gigs and I saw that the, my music likes the people and yeah that's awesome yeah. cool and then from then on it was it like was it straight into i want to be a full-time dj or did it slowly take over your life so to be honest with you in greece if you want to be a full-time dj you have to work and promote yourself a lot i i think it's the same everywhere mm. but you know there are not so many opportunities in Greece to do this as a full-time job. But yeah, during the week I had like two or three gigs and I, after that I was going to other cities and yeah, at some point I, it was like half full-time job. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was paying the bills. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then, did I see you had a residency at one point as well? Soul Bar? Yeah, it's actually, it was one of the first bars I used to work as a DJ. So, my boss used to have the, the Soul, it's for the winter. It's a winter cafe bar. Mm. And during summers, he had another place called Central, so it, it was a big open space. And every summer I was there, and every winter I was at Soul Bar. It was like for seven years, and yeah, it was quite a nice experience. Cause my boss Sakis, he taught me many many things. He he's still my mentor, and he we have a chat like not every day, but every two or three days, and we discuss things about music. Oh, cool. Yeah. So he's a mentor in terms of DJ skills? Yeah, because he used to be a DJ as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, like he used 
to do the opening acts for Black Coffee, Louis Vega, the old school DJs. And yeah, he taught me many things. That's cool. Yeah. And then how long were you in Greece for? I, 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 st- I actually live my whole life in Greece and I moved here in the UK literally three years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's quite recent. To be honest with you, I, it was a decision like this. So during COVID, I said, okay, let's do it. So when was the lockdown here? That was the time that I moved. So mm. I took a big risk to leave everything behind and start something new in a new country that the whole world was facing many difficulties. So, And obviously no gigs at the time. So. Yeah, but I love challenges. It's me like a person like this. So I said, yeah, why not? Let's do it. And here we are today. Wow. And as well as the actual deep playing DJ sets, you, you're big into producing music as well, aren't you? Yeah, the last seven or eight years. Uh, I used to, you know, practice before that and learn new things because I use Ableton and Ableton every like month or two months they release a new feature so you have to, mm. you know, but yeah, at some point after when I was quite confident, I started releasing my own music to labels. Actually today I released a song as well. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I released day to day at Glory Hill Studio, it's a label in Greece, and I have one more uh, upcoming release, so yeah, I think it's going really well. So the first ever release you put out, that was 20... when was that? It was 2017 in a Spanish label, it was one of my first tracks, and it was like a big milestone for me. Because, you know, when you practice and you see the results mm. taking bone and flesh, it's like a big success. And what was the response like at first? To be honest with you, like a small artist, then the response wasn't like quite big. But, you know, my friends, family, all the local DJs in my town supported the track. So I was quite happy for that. So there's quite a community spirit in your in yeah your town. yeah yeah, but now it's quite different because you know I release in bigger labels and they have bigger networks. They keep sending the tracks and the promos to big DJs. I mean, like established DJs, mm-hmm. and the support is much bigger now. Do you get invited to a lot of like? parties and stuff with other DJs with you know by, by the label come and meet this, this person yeah come. yeah yeah back in Greece yeah I used to do that uh, so now here I'm trying to focus like to have more gigs and mm-hmm. be more established here in Manchester because I'm quite new and the last year I have plenty of gigs so people have the chance to meet me and my music So yeah, I think it's like something that will happen eventually. I was looking at your Instagram and it was like every, not not even every weekend, more than that. It was like new gig, new gig, new gig, often in Manchester, but all kind of all around the place, really. So yeah, I I work at the moment with an agency, the Move Music Management, and they're quite good and professional and they, they like my music, so they book me in different places every Friday, Saturday, so that's something that helps me a lot to promote my music and myself as well. And yeah, I'm quite happy and I think more will come to the f- in the near future. And because obviously your roots are house music. Yeah. The events that you get booked to play, do you get the opportunity to play your style? Do you get to play what you want to play or is it... Is there some compromise or do you- No, to be, to be honest with you, as a person, I don't like to follow rules. Like for example, if I go to a place and they'll tell me, you know what, we play like funky house. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll play one or two tracks of that genre, but at the end I'll play my music 
and I see that my music likes to the owners, to the promoters, to the people, and I think that's one of the reasons that they book me so so much. So, yeah, because you deliver what's expected, but maybe with a twist. Yeah, like I'll find good remixes and tracks that are recent, recently released, so not many people have heard them. Mm. And yeah, that's. I think that's my secret. Like, <laughs> you avoid the cliches. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was never that guy. <laughs> Yeah. Do it your own way. Exactly. Exactly. So you play your own stuff and then obviously mixed in with. Yeah. 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 So I'll play like a few of my, of my productions, some unreleased tracks, some released tracks, mm. and I will blend them all together with. At the moment, I play a, a lot of Afro House mm. and. Deep melodic house in the in the residences that I have, and yeah, I think that's that they like most. Yeah. So you take a bit of a risk. Yeah, I mean, like the whole life is a risk. If you don't take a risk, at the end of the day, you will regret it and say, "What if?" So I I'll try it. If it goes well, I'll say okay. If it doesn't, I'll go home. I'll think what went wrong, and the next Friday or Saturday, I'll try to give my best self and improve every time. I think that's probably not not just DJ, and I think that probably applies to a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah. There are some DJs who they seem to just play the same ten songs every Friday night, every Saturday night in the same club. Yeah, I remember when I first started DJing in one of the places that I am resident right now, all the staff told me that we have a guy that every Friday we know what will be the next song. And it's one of the things that I hate as a DJ. Like, there's tons of music out there, so you have to go dig, do your own work, and I mean, like, that's the point of music, to present something new and exciting, not playing all the same things again and again and again. That brings me back to your own productions, actually, because um, I was walking around today, as I was, because I had a few places to go to, so I, I put in uh, my earphones, I was listening to your sort of back catalogue as I was walking. Your style of house, it's, it's really interesting because it's, it's quite dark. Yeah. But, I don't know, how would you describe it to somebody who's never heard it before? So, usually when I produce and I, I imagine myself being in a dark club. Right. So, I think that's why all of my tracks have, has this feeling. Like a dark club with all the lights and the lasers and all that stuff. And I imagine myself being in the crowd and the DJ playing my track. And so it's like dark ambience, like backgrounds with synths that are not so like common. Mm. I would say because I want every time that I release a new track to have a new element, something new. So, and I'm still trying to find myself like as a producer because. I don't know. I love all the music, so but I have to decide what I have to produce, and people know me for that. Like, for mm. example, John is producing like melodic techno or indie dance, or I don't know. But I think I'll find it soon. So you're still looking around for that niche, that lane. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I know that I love melodic stuff, mm. melodic things with dark atmospheres and stuff like that. But I'm still trying to. To find out, because, for example, I'll be on Beatport Charge, I will listen to track, I'll say, okay, oh, well, that's nice. What if I'll do the same? Mm. And then I'll jump to another genre and i listen to that, but sometimes I combine these two genres and try to bring a, a new result to the people mm. that I've never heard before. Interesting idea to visualize how people are going to actually hear it where they're going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I do it like in all of my productions and when I have a result, I mean a finished track, I give the headphones to my girlfriend and I say to her, close your eyes, mm. listen to the whole track twice and tell me that what feeling did you get from my track and when she tells me the same thing, when, what I have in my mind, so I think that's the, the secret like to pass to other people your uh, what you have in your mind by producing something so she is she honest with the feedback of it yeah not... yeah yeah. i told her to be honest every time yeah because if she lies to me what's the point of you know she tells me oh that's nice and i release it and it has like negative feedback or anything mm. i think that does a lot of harm for people when they're close networks like yeah yeah it's great <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Regardless of the quality. I mean, you don't want to hear the bad, like, review or... But, I mean, if your friend will not tell you the truth about, like, your track, mm. I think no one will tell you, like... And when you release this track and you'll see the all that bad, like, reviews, so you will get disappointed and you will tell yourself why. And that's like, uh, I don't think that's good. I mean, you have to be honest. Yeah. And you know you're good. She knows you're good. So you're not going to get offended by some yeah. minor criticism, are you? you know? Yeah. But, you know, I don't, I don't want to talk about myself. I want like my music and the people that are listening to my music to, to tell me that mm. you're doing something good. So, yeah. I I I get good reviews like from the clients from the customers from the places I'm resident so I think that we're doing something good here. Yeah. And then obviously since you've arrived in Manchester you've been pretty busy gigging. How many you arrived 3 years ago? How many gigs do you think you've done in Manchester just in Manchester? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know more than 50. Yeah. I mean, the first one and a half year, you know, I was quite new. I was trying to see how this, how the music industry works here. Mm. And uh, because here you have many agencies that many DJs get booked from them. Back in Greece, we don't have this. So whatever you do, you do it on your own. So I was trying to get in touch with, with an agency. And I remember when I text to to the guy that was owning the the agency, I text him like on January two thousand twenty one and he saw the, the the DM like after one year after. Yeah and shout out to Jay. Yeah. <laughs> he called me then, we had a little conversation and yeah, since then I'm very happy working with them and they appreciate me and the feelings are mutual. So it became a good relationship in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I guess they get a lot of people contacting them daily. Yeah, so. I mean, they work with bands as well. Mm -hmm. And like two, three months ago, they started working with bands, booking them in places all around Manchester. And the DJ roster is quite big and all the DJs there are very good and I'm very happy to be in this agency working for these guys. It feels like a bit of a community. Yeah, it is actually. It is like if I have a problem, I can give them a call and tell them whatever is in my mind and they'll help me. All the, all the stuff there are pretty good and helpful. Seems like quite a fun but very disorientating and tiring lifestyle yeah because it's f like 3 a.m and maybe you want to go home but you've got to look like you're having the best time of your life behind the booth yeah so i mean that's one of my first problems when i start djing like because it's a job that you must be like happy all the time so the crowd see that you're having fun behind the booth so that you will pass this feeling mm. to them, but there are some days that just you can't do it, but you have. Mm. So 
I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, like the the right word for that. I mean, like you have not to pretend, but like at the end of the day, you are a human being. So if you're not feeling well, just do your job and go home, and you can apologize later for that. But to to be honest with you, until now. This thing never happened to me because I love DJing and every Monday I'm looking forward for Friday and Saturday to go and DJ and yeah, it's something that until now never happened to me. The nice thing about being the bassist in a rock band is like I always enjoy gigging, but when you've driven there and you've loaded the gear up and you've waited around for two hours and any alcohol that you had at the start of the night is starting to wear off. <laughs> you're not moody, but you're definitely flagging a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But you can just turn that into like a kind of a moody, moody persona. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be like hands in the air going, come on, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Way that a DJ might have to. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like, it's part of our job, like, and your job and my job. And I think we have. To find solutions, so when I don't feel like I'm in a mood, I'll have one or two drinks to cheer up. Mm. And I see like a difference to myself, like boost my energy, and then I'll do everything mm. behind the booth. Mm. The problem is a lot of people, I think, can't even get behind the booth unless they've had a certain amount, or they can't get up on stage unless they've had a certain amount. And that's where that's when it's a different story. It's not just like yeah, 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 exactly. No, a few people like that. Do you have to drive to a lot of gigs, or no? All of my all of my gigs are like all around the city center, mm. and I live in the city center, so I go there on foot, like ten, fifteen minutes. But when it's raining. It's crazy. I have to walk like with my umbrella, like twenty-five <laughs> minutes. Keep my clothes dry, and, and yeah. But all of the gigs and all the places are nearby. So yeah. And you've been around the UK as well a little bit. You mentioned that you've been to Liverpool. Yeah, I won a DJ competition. I think it was on March. Oh, cool. Yeah, and I was invited then to. Barboteca there to make a set for them and yeah it was quite nice the bar was nice the people the vibe everything and maybe I'll be back soon so I don't know yet have you got a venue in mind that you want to go to you mean like to DJ yeah yeah or even just even just a visit uh, my big dream is to DJ at the warehouse project oh yeah I yeah. mean like all of us, I think it's mm. something big, like very well known DJs are coming there, so yeah, my my goal is someday to maybe do the opening act there for a DJ. Uh, let's see. You notice the vibe is different in different cities, or is it more about the music and the venue? I think the vibe, like here in the UK, I've noticed that many DJs are playing like this UK tech house. Mm. That's only solid drums and some vocals. It's a, it's a it's a music it's a kind of music that to be honest I don't like a lot. And I've noticed that in many cities around the UK they used to play that kind of music. Uh, but I've been in good venues that they play like alternative music like. Afro house or like techno or maybe soulful house. So you have plenty of options here in Manchester and plenty of bars that you can go and listen to different kinds of music. So if you're in somewhere and you don't like it, you can just leave. Go next door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the nice thing about a city yeah. this big. Yeah. You have many options so mm. you don't have to complain about so if you were just growing up in a small town and it's like there's one club. <laughs> yeah, but <I'd, laughs> it's a different story. Back then, yeah, we used to have only one club and the same music again and again. 
and you know you didn't have any other choice or option where to go so yeah but now it's quite different i guess when the scene is that big and that varied it pushes people to get better yeah yeah i agree because you try always to be on top and make yourself better and when you see someone else doing something really good you want to do the same mm -hmm. and have the same opportunities with him or her yeah um oh yeah so you mentioned that you've just released a single yeah it's called abstract reality it's released at glory hill studio it's a label in greece i released an ep one year ago and yeah i love the vibe of this label and the owner he's a dj as well and i used to do the warm-ups for him oh, cool. in the past that makes a big difference i think for the working relationship yeah 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 and he's quite straight with me for example i send him a demo he'll tell me oh i don't like this or change the baseline or and yeah we work really really well together and i think more are about to come in the in the future cool um i just listened to it today it's got really interesting synth yeah going on where it sort of progressively gets higher and higher and higher so you don't hear that very much in house i think yeah it's like an influence i uh my favorite dj at the moment is like dixon and economist mm. And I listen a lot of their music, and they're a big influence for me. And most of their productions, they're doing something weird with their noises and all the plugins that they use. So I'll try to not copy them, but pass this to my own productions. And to be honest, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to release this track, but then. I left it on the side for one or two months, and when I listened to it again, I said... <laughs> and yeah, I decided to, to send it to, to the label. We've released it, yeah. Does that happen a lot where you create something and then you think, hmm, I'm not sure about this, maybe I need to put it away for a while? So I think the the most common problem with all the producers is it's the same, like, they produce something, they will think that, oh, this is not good, or this is too bad. And they will start producing another track, and they will find it after, like, one, two, three months by accident. And they will open the project on, on their software, and when they will listen to it, they'll say, oh, that's, that's different. Because you're hearing it like a new listener, like a first-time listener, yeah, yeah, yeah. as close as you can. Because when you work something, you spend too many hours, like, writing, deleting, writing, deleting, and your ears are getting tired of that mm. sounds. And one of the tricks to clear your mind is, like, to, to listen to different kinds of music, like jazz or rock, or to, to forget that kind mm. of, you know, melodies and bass lines and, yeah. And avoid those like 18 hour sessions. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy. Literally, I wake up one morning and I'll say to myself, oh, I'm ready to produce. I'll open my laptop and I'll, I'll look at my screen and I feel like useless. I can't do it. And for example, yesterday at night at one o'clock, I was watching TV and I had an idea. And I opened my, my laptop and I had already a track in like two hours. So that usually happens to me when I'll say, oh, I'm ready to produce, let's do it. It never happened. Right. So you're one of those like jump out of bed at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Let me get this down quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm noticing that because I always ask people what their writing process is. And they always say like, it never happens when I, when I schedule in, okay, I am going to be writing from two o'clock in the afternoon till eight o'clock at night. It never seems to be that. That's never the productive time. Yeah. It's always wait when they've got something else to do and they have to interrupt their own work life so they can go and do yeah. this. So I think like when you push to yourself to do something, and I think that's in all the things in life, when you push yourself, you don't give your best of yourself and you're struggling even with 
the easy stuff but when you're f you when you feel free and you say okay let's watch a youtube video and you'll catch a sound from that video mm. then you know you pass the idea to your mind what if i do this with a quiet quiet orientation and yeah i think that's a secret to to have a flow when you produce if you push yourself or the results will be really really bad or this will never happen because there's no fun suddenly yeah there's no yeah. playing yeah. Yeah. so yeah. you must have fun and enjoying what you're doing mm. i was speaking to a another producer a guy called monge too um and he was telling me that for years he would wake up and it would be like right music 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 focus 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 and he told me that it was, you know, to the point where it was kind of affecting his relationships a little bit because he was sacrificing so much time just focusing on the music. Um, but he wasn't, he didn't feel like he was getting where he wanted to. And then one day he said, OK, I'm going to stop all that. and I'm just going to do it when I want to and when it's fun. And then within a few months, he played at Park Life, the big festival. Yeah, I think... When you push to yourself too much, it will affect like your mental health mm. because you're saying like, oh, I'm not doing something good and I'm not a good producer and this will pass to your DJ skills as well as that. And I think when you feel free and you don't push yourself too much, you will you'll have good results. I'm the same. I, I see many people that started uh, after me and they are doing really, really well in the music industry. And I told to myself when I have time and when I feel like I'm in the mood to do it, I will start producing because at the moment I have a full time job as well and I don't have plenty of time. So it's quite difficult for me because like Friday, Saturdays I'm DJing and I have only one Sunday for myself. And but I try during my my holidays, produce or when I not too tired after work to spend one two hours. Don't it let is. it become a chore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's anyone who's not just music. Anyone who's got a hobby that they use as a release from the stress of daily life. Yeah, exactly. Mm. I think that's good advice. Because imagine if you're at work and you think, oh, I've got to go home and I have to finish that track that I don't, I'm not sure about, or I have to go and play this gig that I don't want to play. Yeah. Just adds to the stress. When you say, I have to, oh, everything collapse. Mm, I want to. <laughs> yeah. You have to enjoy what you're doing. Mm. I think. So what's the plans for the future? The plans for the future. The plans for the future are to... I have one more track that it's about to get released, I think, at the end of August. Mm. I don't have a date yet. And to keep, like, keep my, my gigs and go in new places, maybe other towns. And yeah, at some point to achieve my goals and be at the Warehouse Project. Yeah. And... Yeah, one step at a time. I don't want to say, oh, in two years or in three years. I want to do that and be there. I focus on tomorrow, what I want to do tomorrow. Small steps to build mm. the big step. I think that's the way to look at it, yeah. I mean, if, if we learn anything from COVID, it's you can't plan. Yeah, exactly. You can't even plan two months from now. Yeah, the whole life is unpredictable, so you don't know. So you, are, you must focus on small things and start building, building until you get there. Great to see. Um, because when you look at your, because what I always do with guests is I go on their social media, usually their Instagram, because that's where most artists are active. And I scroll right to the beginning and then I just work my way through it. So it was quite cool to do that for yours because you can see the story of how you started in Greece. You can see those early residencies. Yeah. And then I have to say, you see the gigs get bigger and bigger and bigger as well. And then obviously there's the move to Manchester and then... Oh, what was that? I wanted to ask about this. What was that drone video? Oh. That was... 
<laughs> I thought I was tripping. <laughs> so we did it with one of my friends. He is a great guy too. And he's a videographer. So it's like a 360 camera. It was not a drone. Right. Okay. Yeah, so he was recording with the camera and then he edited it from, from his phone or from his computer, I don't know. Ah, okay. So the camera has a touch screen so you can rotate mm. the whole video and everything and do this upside down effect. I don't know what, <laughs> how he does it. And yeah, I, I follow him on Instagram and I saw his work and one day I text him and yeah, we did it. And I think more videos will do it together because his job is like top quality. Have you done any like um, music videos, especially for the single releases? No, because the labels the labels usually do right, right. Do that kind of like videos. So until now, no. But maybe in the future, if I release something in like big label, yeah. No, oh, cool. Look forward to seeing it. Yeah, me too. Well, good luck with everything. You said this weekend is a bit of a weekend off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm planning to spend some time with my friends, my girlfriend, maybe go to Wales. Oh, cool. Yeah, to explore this part of the country there. And Have you been to Wales before? No, to be honest. No, no, no. I've been to Scotland. Yeah. And I think now it's time to go to Wales. Whereabouts in Wales are you going? I don't know yet. I haven't decided. So, it's all nice, really. Yeah. Uh, but let's hope the weather to be good and not training again. We will see. Yeah. I always feel really calm in Wales. It's like a. It just feels like a big garden to me. Cause yeah, I saw some pictures and it's like beautiful. Yeah. Really nice. I and you can get like next. plenty of inspiration and clear your mind. I prefer to go in that kind of places, like not too crowded and try to relax especially after DJing where it's it's all about the crowds and it's all yeah. about the noise I can imagine that's a bit of a relief great well thank you for doing this you're welcome thank you for having me and I wish all the best luck for you and for your channel and to you The Other Side Podcast hosted by John Stone New episodes every week.